Now we've seen that Gauss's law allows us to very easily work out the electric field in nice simple symmetrical cases like spherical symmetry from a point source or a linear symmetry from an infinite plane. But can Gauss's law always help us solve electromagnetism problems? Well, it's always true, but that doesn't mean it's always useful. Let's consider a more complicated case, like a, oh, a cube, say, that's charged. Uniform charge on a cube. Could we use Gauss's law to work out the electric field around this? Well, it's certainly true. If you do a Gaussian surface around here, the surface integral over that is going to be equal to the sum of the charge inside divided by epsilon naught. But it's hard to think of a good surface where all parts of it are either parallel or perpendicular to the field. There's no real symmetry here. The field's going to vary in a rather complicated way. So in a situation like this, it's not really useful because you don't have a nice symmetry that you can use to simplify it down. So does this mean Gauss's theorem is not very useful at all? Well, often that's the case. Some situations like this you do have to go back and do a, a full integral or just an experiment, which might be easier. However, it's quite often the case that Gauss's law is a good approximation. So, for example, let's say you had a, a disk uniformly charged. Now, this is not the same as an infinite plane, which you can solve using Gauss's law, but if you're very close to it, say just a little way above or below the plane here, small distance there, as long as that distance r is much less than the radius of the disk, it's a probably a pretty good approximation that the field lines are just going straight out of uniform strength, in which case we probably could use Gauss's law. Likewise, if you're close to a, a rod, there's got a symmetry. In this case, it's a cylindrical symmetry. The, radio, the field line's probably going out radially, so you could use Gauss's theorem if it was an infinite rod. But even if it isn't an infinite rod, as long as you're close enough somewhere near the middle, that's probably a pretty good approximation. It wouldn't be a very good approximation near the edge, so it wouldn't work very well there. So that's one situation where it's useful, where you can approximate something as being symmetrical, even though it isn't on big scales, but as long as you're locally there, it is on small scales. For example, this approximation is probably good for most of the interior of a capacitor. Another situation where it would be useful is when you could make up a shape by adding simple things. So, for example, let's say you had a, a vast charged plane, a charged rope, and part way up in a charged ball. Now, I couldn't use Gauss's theorem for all those combined because there's no particular symmetry there. But for every one of them, for the plane, I could use that to get an equation for the electric field. For a sufficiently long string, I could get it. For the sphere, I could get it. And then, because of the principle of superposition, the electric field that you actually get is just the sum of the three. So sometimes you can break a real complicated situation up into several simpler ones, solve them using Gauss's law, and then add them back together to get the final answer. So it is actually very useful in practice.